Welcome to This Week at Otterbein. I'm Michaela Hermes. On this show, two Otterbein publications and advisors receive national honors. And I'm Justin Jordan. Also this week, the campus prepares for homecoming. But first, a Monday evening, Anna Phillips, a sophomore of the me and a member of the local sorority Sigma Alpha Tau, had a fatal cardiac event. The members of her sorority banded the entire community together to pray for Anna and even plan a candlelight vigil yesterday night. On Wednesday evening, Otterbein students organized a candlelight vigil for Anna Phillips, a local student who had a fatal cardiac event on Monday night. Fatal cardiac event means just exactly what it sounds like. Her heart stopped. She was placed in a medically induced coma, medically induced paralysis to protect her brain and her organs. Her body temperature was also lowered. And this morning at about 8 a.m., and I opened her eyes. Jordan Van Duding, with the help of her sisters of the local sorority, Sigma Alpha Tau, also known as OWLS, united an entire community to pray for Anna Phillips using only social media. Um, Anna's in our sorority, it's Brooks Little, and um, you know, I think when it happened, it kind of took a part of all of us because it came out of nowhere, and we're doing all we can because there's not much that we can do. So the shirts, you know, just the hashtag Anna Strong is just getting more people involved and telling more people about it. And, you know, we're taking all the prayers and the thoughts to lift her up. And clearly it's working. You know, she woke up this morning and today's better than yesterday. And that was better than the day before. And, you know, we're just really looking forward to a full recovery because we miss her. We want her back. So. The candlelight vigil had over 200 guests in attendance all from various Greek chapters and organizations across campus. Dr. Judy, campus chaplain, had this to say. And every student here is precious, and um, we all affect each other. You can see there are more than 200 people here tonight. And I imagine that there are some people who don't know Anna, but we're interconnected. We're part of Otterbein. So I didn't know Anna before this happened, and now she has a really big apartment in my heart. This is Justin Jordan reporting for Otterbein TV. Members of the Created Equal organization had yet another protest this year in front of the campus center, but student Boston Gregg and many Otterbein students had something very different in mind today. On Monday morning, the Created Equal organization organized a pro-life protest outside of Otterbein's very own campus center. But local student Boston Gregg organized a counter protest with only his bedsheet. I decided to do this today, one, because I didn't have class, so, um, and two, because I don't believe I have a right to decide for a woman what they can and cannot do with their body. put it on uh, Twitter and said that I was going to protest it, and I actually just expected myself and like maybe two or three other people to come out. This year, the Created Equal organization came with signs with graphic images as well as GoPro cameras attached to their bodies to capture the students' reactions. When met with the counter-protest, Seth Dreyer, a director of training at the Created Equal organization, had this to say. I came here today because as a liberal arts school, I think that we're open to a free exchange of ideas. As you'll see today, we have many students who've chosen to censor the reality of abortion by holding sheets in front of pictures that show the babies. I thought this would be an open, a place for an open exchange of ideas. I still hope it will be, that's why I'm here. Unfortunately, some students today have chosen to oppose that open exchange of ideas. This is Justin Jordan reporting for Otterbein TV. Two Department of Communication publications and advisors have won national awards. Otterbein 360 and TNC Magazine were honored with the Society of Professional Journalists 2015 Sunshine Award. It is given for notable contributions to open government. Otterbein 360 advisor Hillary Warren was tabbed for the College Media Association's Distinguished Advisor Award. TNC Magazine advisor Mike Wagner received the CMA's 2015 College Media Advisors Honor Roll Award. You may need to take a detour to get where you want on campus this homecoming weekend. Grove Street between Main and Home Streets will be closed for homecoming festivities. The Grove Street closure begins Friday morning at 8 and ends Saturday evening at 6. Car cars will also be blocked from accessing Grove Street from Cochrane Alley. This year's homecoming court is a rocking for a good cause. 
Through Friday, the 10 candidates can be found in rocking chairs in front of the Campus Center to raise awareness and money for the Otterbein Annual Fund. In addition to giving in person, you can vote for your favorite pair by donating money on their Rockathon page. At news taping time, Carly Watson and Luke Hassenflug were in the lead online, over $1,100 pledged in support for them. The winners will be announced at halftime of the homecoming football game. The Department of Biology and Earth Sciences is putting the spotlight on its academic activities for homecoming. The Science Center will host an open house on Saturday morning for two hours beginning at 1030. The labs will be home to fr family friendly activities and interactive stations featuring skulls, fossils, botanical surprises, and what's being called a sweet DNA treat. Students will also lead activities with the parakeets. United Methodist Church representatives will be on campus next week to review the denomination's affiliation with Otterbein. They were the required after the university's regional accreditation after every 10 years, open sessions for staff, administrators, faculty, students, and recent alumni will be held Tuesday, September 29th in Roush Hall. Visit the Ozone Accreditation tab for details on session locations and times. Now's the time to consider if you'd like to receive some of your education in another country. The Study Abroad Fair will give you the chance to ask questions to program providers, faculty advisors, and past participants. They will also help, you guide, help guide you through the application process. The Study Abroad Fair takes place Tuesday, September 29th in the Campus Center Lounge from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Looking for a reason to go outside? Then Jay has the app to get you going. On this week's Tech Time with Jay, he takes a look at the GPS-based game Ingress. Oh, hey there guys, and welcome back to Tech Time with Jay. I'm Jay Corbett, and today I hope you guys are getting ready for Pokemon Go because it's going to be coming out sometime in November. I believe it's going to be November, like, in the middle of it. I'll keep you guys posted in the next Tech Time. However, I'm going to get you guys a game that is similar to Pokemon Go. The game is called Ingress, so let's check out this game, shall we? Ingress transforms the real world into the landscape for a global game of mystery, intrigue, and competition. You choose a side. The enlightened side seeks to embrace the power that energy may bestow upon us, while the resistance struggles to defend and protect what's left of our humanity. The world is the game. You move through the real world using your device and the Ingress app to discover and tap sources of the mysterious energy. You acquire objects to aid in your quest, you deploy tech to capture territory, and you ally with other players to advance the cause of the enlightened or the resistance. The struggle is being played out globally. You track the progress of other players around the world, you plan your next steps and communicate with others using an intelligence app. The struggle to save the planet spans the entire world. Groups of people acting together can be more effective than individuals acting alone. Cooperation across neighborhoods, cities, and countries will be needed to achieve the ultimate victory. Well guys, that is Ingress for you in a nutshell. Ingress is basically Pokemon Go before Pokemon Go comes out. It encourages its users to go out and explore areas to be able to obtain these mysterious energy that is being scattered all over the world. If you're able to get this app, which is free by the way on iOS and Android, you should put it on your phone and you should go and explore the entire world. Well before Pokemon Go comes out, because once that comes out then you're going to be exploring. But I digress. This uh, app, Ingress, is one of a kind and you should actually give it a try well that's it for tech time with jay this week i'll catch you guys next week next on this week at Otterbein, three cardinals as recognized as conference athletes of the week but first here are some upcoming campus events to keep in mind when making your plans this week
The home course was friendly to the women's cross country team as they hosted the Otterbein Invitational on September 19th. The Cardinal women took first place in the 18 team meet. Finley and Ohio Wesleyan finished second and third. Freshman Claire Lamb led the way for the Cards, taking home the individual title. Senior Victoria Conkle turned in a seventh place finish, while freshman Kira Judd finished in the tenth position. The men's team also had a strong showing at the meet. They took second, the second spot at the Otterbein Invitational. Ohio Wesleyan won by placing its first four finishers in the top 14. Freshman Ian Kellogg was the leader for the Cardinals, finishing second overall. Phil Cochran also had a top 10 finish for the Cards, checking in at ninth place. The next time both the men's and women's cross country teams will be in action is on Friday, October 2nd at the All-Ohio Championship meet. Well, the Otterbein football team picked up their first win of the year this past weekend, a 31-21 win at Marietta. Drew Irvin had the play of the game for the Cards as he returned an 80, a 43-yard reception to the house late in the fourth quarter to seal the Cardinal victory. Otterbein will host Wilmington in, their, in the weekend matchup against Wilmington. Kickoff will begin at 2 p.m. You can, of course, catch all the action of Saturday's contest right here on Otterbein TV. With so much success this past week from Otterbein Sports, the Cardinals had three athletes named as Athletes of the Week. Drew Irvin was named Defensive Player of the Week in the OAC for football. Freshman Claire Lamb was named as the OAC Women's Cross Country Athlete of the Week. David Monaco earned the same honors for the men's golf team this week after he took home first place at the Capitol Fall Classic on Friday. So guys, a lot of success for Otterbein Sports and a big weekend coming up with homecoming and a few soccer matches as well. Hopefully they keep up that luck this weekend. Yeah, let's hope. Do you know what Bay means? How about Netflix and chill? I sure didn't know it all. I decided to check with a couple of Otterbein students to see if they knew the answers. All right, I'm here with Jude Burnside, Drew Carson, Brittany Howe. Can you please define the term bay? Um, usually they're not before anyone else, but um, like your person of the week, I think it just is someone that's special to you. Uh, before anyone else, I'm assuming. What is talking? Talking, um, talking would be like you're interested in dating them, but you don't want to make a commitment yet. Um, sort of together, but not. I think when you talk, you in the beginning it's not really much, but like the further you go on, is the more you get serious. So. Can you tell me what Netflix and chill mean? Netflix and chill just kind of means we're going to start out with Netflix and see where it goes. Like chilling? Yeah, like the chill part is the part that's up to you. Um, I think it means two different things to the girl and the boy. Um, to a girl, I literally think like they really want to watch a movie. It means it leads to other things. Like? Probably some uh, recreational activities. Okay, good enough. <laughs> recreational activities. That's all for this week at Otterbein. Thanks for watching.